Uh, silver is a metal, an element on the periodic table that is concentrated in uh, the Earth's crust by various uh, chemical and physical processes. There's a little bit of silver everywhere. There's silver in seawater. If you boil off a cubic kilometer of seawater, you will get some silver along with everything else. I should probably just speak about the kinds of deposits, or the, the, the one kind of deposit that we are looking at, and that is a vein system, and a vein system that has low sulfides and is formed close to the Earth's surface. And those veins are formed by uh, essentially hot water that is coming off magma intrusions deep in the crust. Uh, being heated, it rises in the crust up towards the, the surface, and those hot waters uh, essentially precipitate silver and gold minerals into veins. Yeah, so basically it's carried as a fluid uh, when it's deep in the earth under high temperature and pressure. Silver and gold and other precious metals, and many of the metals in general, they're sort of the last thing to not be solid, so you get higher concentrations and eventually they build up pressure and shoot up as a vein. And then that'll be later blasted apart and ruptured by another fracture event. So veins can be very complex and they don't always follow the same path, they break off. These types of deposits form about a kilometer below the surface at the time. And a lot of the deposits that we're mining were formed 20 to 25 million years ago. We have to have a volcanic environment. And so what we would see as the surface expression is just the volcano, but the silver veins are forming at depth below the below the volcano. We go out and look for these things and we use a, a, a number of different techniques. It all starts in the office with computers and geographical information systems and maps and old uh, prospecting reports and things like that. Once you've got that, that environment defined, going out and uh, walking in the field to find the veins, uh, to find the structures, to find the alteration uh, and the rock types. An alteration is uh, normally a bleaching or an, uh, a colouring of the rocks that is uh, specific to the environment of silver veins. Sometimes you'll find silver or gold right on surface and uh, if that's the case then it makes it a lot easier. But many of the deposits that we're looking at are b blind or buried deposits. So you see the vein on surface, but you don't know, you don't see any values on surface. First you have to outline an ore deposit, which means that uh, miners will drill holes into the ground, and as they drill the holes into the ground, they'll extract the rock. And uh, the way they extract the rock tells them at some particular depth, there might be some silver ore. Ore is silver, gold, copper, lead, zinc that is economic or can be mined or extracted economically. It looks quite black and oxidized so if you if you can think of old silver tea services or things like that if you don't polish them they get kind of a, a black or a grayish patina on them. Uh, that's exactly what silver looks like because normally it's been sitting around for millions of years before we find it. And from doing a lot of these drill holes, they're able to outline a three-dimensional um, model of what this deposit looks like underground. Okay, so when we dig a hole in the ground and we see rock, um, and we th see rock that we think contains some silver minerals, we have to understand, well, how much silver is present? So these are rock or soil samples that would be uh, collected in the field, normally on a grid located uh, on a map when the samples are taken. And then those samples are sent to uh, an assay lab or what we call a geochemical lab. We take the rock and we divide it up into sections. So we have this uh, core, this piece of core, this long piece of core, and we'll divide it up into, let's say, one meter sections. And each section we'll take and we'll crush and we'll pulverize it and uh, after we pulverized it, we'll take out about 30 grams to represent everything that was in that one meter section. And that 30 grams goes into a, a pot together with some fluxing agents as well as some lead oxide. What happens is that you, you put that into a furnace and you melt the whole thing. Now, the precious metals like gold and silver, they'll actually attach to the lead and all the other rock material will, will basically uh, become 
a part of a, a slag material. It's a siliceous, low-density uh, rock. You then can pour it into a little mold. And because the lead is heavier, it'll settle right down to the bottom of the mold and um, the slag will form on top of it. And once it's solidified, you can break the slag from the lead button that contains the silver. Then you take that lead button and you put it into another dish. Now this dish is usually made of some type of bone and it's very porous. It could be ceramic as well. Um, and you put this back in the furnace and once you heat that up, the lead gets absorbed into the, into the container itself, into the vessel itself, into the walls of it, because the pores allow the lead to enter them. But the gold and silver, they don't, and they form a little bead that's left over. And then you weigh the bead, which will contain uh, silver and gold. And that's, and you come up with a value of how much that represents uh, in a ton of rock.